Welcome to Mastering Life's Adventures, an educational podcast about tapping into your true self, the soul, your soul, the substance of your life, to discover what life's ups and downs are really about, and how to have a greater sense of purpose, peace, joy, and fulfillment. I am Dr. Judith Holder, your host, coach, psychologist, fellow seeker who enjoys diving into the connections between spirituality, psychology, wellness, and your everyday life's adventures. All preparing and polishing you like the fastest of magnificent diamond to be your best self. If you're craving more from your life, you are in the right place. Come, let's journey together and transforming what you know and to who you really are. Mastering Life's Adventures begins now. Hi, I'm back with another key to understanding simple things you can do to help you in your soul progress. So this key is about love. Love is for letting go. But it can be hard to let go. And what does that mean even to let go? First, let's let's talk a little bit about love and how love forms. It's usually forming because we show a great admiration, appreciation. We are concerned about others. We want the best for them. It's something that innately cultivates within us. And I think at a soul level, we all are here to be able to expand the love, give the love, honor the love that comes into our life and with the people that are around us. And what happens with love is is that sometimes it gets stuck. It gets stuck because we have different views about love. And so my view about love may be different from your view about love. It's very very different from being involved in a relationship with someone can be different, as well as being involved at, at work, for example, can be different qualities of love or types of love, if that's what you want to call that. But what I'm most curious about is how we love. I think this is probably many sessions about that, but we love because God is within us and God loves us. And therefore we learn how to love not only ourselves, but others. And that love is really, I think, is an uplifting quality. It's a quality in which we want to give more of ourselves or we want to help in some particular way or we want to be able to feel that warm sensation around our heart or in our heart that allows us to feel like we're connected to something externally to ourselves in terms of people and in terms of family or in terms of a hobby, but also that we're connected to above ourselves. And that above is a connection, that that special umbilical cord, so to speak, that we have uh, from God's heart to our heart. That becomes important because sometimes we cut off that umbilical cord or it gets smaller in terms of the flow of energy to us. Why is that? And some of that may be related to how we were brought up and how we learned to express love or how we learn not to love because sometimes we get into the sense that we don't love ourselves because of actions or behaviors or something that we've engaged in that moves us feeling as if we're not lovable, we're not worthy of the love, or we're not the center of someone's love. And what I would like you to think about this in a little different way is, is that first and foremost, when we learn to love, we learn in little ways to appreciate who we are. And that includes the soul. And the soul, in its essence, is always like a little child wanting your attention. But if we have our attention to every other place or thing or activity going on, we lose sight that our soul is here to evolve and here to grow. Our soul wants our attention. And when we put our attention to that soul, it's usually through a visualization or which we have 
aware of our heart and the warming of our heart, we can have a relationship with our soul for the mere fact of talking to our soul, talking to our inner nature, talking and giving words of encouragement, giving appreciation to who we really are, which is that substance of our life, which is our soul. Somehow we get away from that and we move more into criticism of a situation that has happened to us, being angry about how something was perceived and it wasn't perceived in the right way, or we're finding that we're getting into disparaging types of comments towards other individuals. All of those are sharp edges, and those sharp edges are not allowing us to know what it is to love. We know it is to be annoyed and frustrated, but when we feel a sense of love, there wells up within us, usually within our heart, this warm sensation, this kind sensation, this willing to want to give and help sensation. That sometimes is usurped by our own expectations of how we want to be loved and not realizing that maybe God is expanding us to be loved and to love in different ways. For example, well, we want to be show appreciation for that project that we did, and we spent a long time doing that project. We want that love come back to us through the form of appreciation or validation. Those within our work group don't do it very well, and so they look at it as just expected of you to be able to do that. And what we're really wanting is someone to say, wow, you did a great job. Thank you. That helps us to feel as if we're appreciated and valued, which are all qualities of love. But sometimes the curveball is, is just that can we do it regardless of what people say or don't say to us? Can we continue to love the act of what we did to do that project? That we are the first and foremost ones of giving appreciation and praise. And if we don't get it from the world or from that work group, it's not going to sink our ship. It's not going to make us feel as if we are now sad, depressed, mad, or angry. And instead, we know for the greater cause of how God is, God sometimes says, this is your test. Can you do this without expecting anything from someone else or expecting another high praise or high five from that word group? And instead, they accept it as, hey, that's quality work. Thank you very much. And they move on. Uh, and so we have to realize that if we're putting our attention too far externally and expecting others to validate who we are, confirm who we are, acknowledge who we are, then we are really tilted too far and we have to come back to the center and realize that everyone is going to show forth the love in the way in which we want. But we have to look at ways in which it's done indirectly or directly. And then sometimes we have to change the expectations in its entirety and not even move into expecting others to show us the love in a particular way. So what happens with this love aspect, love is for letting go. One of the things we have to let go of is the expectations about how it comes back to us. We're doing it because we have a passion around that particular project, or we have an interest. We want to be creative. So how do we get more centered in knowing that we're working from a higher power? We're just not working from the mundane level. We're working from God's level of God's awareness that he wants to express, she wants to express through us and in us. And how do we be okay with that? How do we are able to say, okay, I'm not going to have my 90% of attention focused on wanting other people to accept what I just did in that project or what I just said in that presentation. Yes, to a certain degree, we all want to know that we were headed in the right direction, said the right things, or did the right things. We don't, yeah, I get that. That's, that's very fair that we do want some of that. But how can we also say, if I am more than whatever percentage you want to give it, if 80% of your attention is trying to look and get appreciation and um, validation from others, that's a little bit high. 
that's a very, very high. And that means you're, you're a little bit further away from your soul connection and moving into people connection. It moved into more of what the world says is really more valuable than what my soul says. Because at our soul level, we say, well, I think this was a great job. I looked at the pros and the cons. I really ferreted it out by asking other people about their expectations about the project and what they were looking for. I did the things that I thought would be more most valuable. And now I'm showing forth the project of what has come out of that discovery process that I went through. And then you let it go. And if it has to be an iterative process, once you turned in that particular project, it becomes an iterative process and you look at it that way. But you're really looking at it from a sense of self-assuredness within your own self, within your own soul awareness that we're doing our best. We can let go of the other rest, the other, this other stuff, if, if it doesn't land very well with a couple of people. But the majority of people, they really loved it. So you look at the couple, if you need people who didn't land very well, and you say, okay, what are your thoughts about this? What are additional ways that I can improve this? What did you like about it? What did you found that it didn't click very well with you? Okay, that's a good discussion to have, not to avoid a discussion, but you know, being aware of even if the 80% of people said, I love it, or 90% even said, I really I love what you've done here, that's great, but how do you not get so tilted in, in looking for that only externally, but you haven't within your own self said, this is a good product, or this is a banning step to what I'm doing. And I know it's going to be, have to be tweaked, but I'm liking how I'm moving forward with this. We have to, uh, at work, or we have to uh, be at, at, in a relationship that we have with someone, we have to have some centeredness within ourselves. So love begins with appreciating ourselves appreciating and valuing what we add to the table, uh, value and appreciating the ways in which we're going about doing something or willingness to refine what we're doing and how we're doing it. Those are all important things to be able to do in order to help you to say, what does love mean to me in the work that I do and how I talk to myself and how I show up and interaction with individuals. There's certain qualities that you want to be able to garner, reflect on, and emanate in order for you to be a greater chalice or a greater vehicle for the higher source, your I am presence, your God source, your Atman, whatever you want to call that higher source, that I believe love is a flowing. So that the more that we meditate, think, reflect on, what this quality of love, what does that look like in my world? How can I be more loving in my interactions? How can I love my own soul as it continues to evolve and grow? These are all good questions to be able to ask. But what gets in our way is the disappointments. The disappointments that we've had with being in a relationship that we love this person, but this person at some level, in some way, small or great, rejects us, rejects our quote-unquote love. Does that now put a kind of a dent in our ability to love? It may slow us down, certainly. It may move us into having to reflect on what's going on. It may even move us into taking a step back and just saying, is this the right relationship for me at this point in time? It may end up being, you may have to make a course correction. You have to do something else. But the di disappointment that we had in that relationship or several relationships that we've been involved with, especially if they're more romantic types of relationships, does impact our ability sometimes to love. It makes us to have more guarded or it makes us to be more insensitive because we don't want to be hurt. So we put up these barriers. We put up these grits. And we put up this obstacle course to, for other people to prove that they really do love us because they're willing to go through the obstacle course. We are the ones who have to be able to, after relationships in which have not gone in the way that we would like them to go in, how do we love ourselves? How do we appreciate, well, there's something I can learn from that relationship. There's something that I didn't see or I saw, but I thought was going to improve, but I'm going to do differently next time. How can I call upon the Lord to guide me, my heart and mind to heal me sometimes of those um, spikes and those darts 
and those things that were painful in the relationship that you were involved in. It could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be more relationships that now creates, as I said, this barrier in the form of sometimes we become more callous to love or we move into a wait and see to see how this person's going to act. And that's a way in which we're trying to protect ourselves. I get it. But how do we also go in, go within, go within and ask God, I elected to be in this relationship. These are some of the things that happened for me. Help me to uplift my heart. Help me not to close my heart. Help me to see the qualities of love that I was giving or the qualities I need to cultivate. Because sometimes through the experiences that we gain, we learn more about ourselves. We learn more about what attracted me to this person, what attracted me to this job, what attracted me even to the hobby that we may have you know, ended up having an injury from, and now we're annoyed about getting that injury. Love is like a bouquet of flowers, and we have to realize what are the bouquet of flowers that I am cultivating, and how do I want to cultivate them? And for the flowers that I'm cultivating, sometimes some of them wither, and we have to kind of dig it up or take it out of the bouquet and put another flower in, but we're always, this is the soul evolution. The soul is always wanting you to cultivate the flowers and take out the things that are not working. Put in the things that you have learned from and you can continue to do the cultivation. That's the power of love. The love, you love yourself enough to say, I'm not gonna do it right all the time. It just comes with the territory of being human. I'm not going to be critical of myself or judging so extreme of myself that it puts me in a little box and it puts me a little bit away from who I really need to be and how authentic I need to show up. Because even in the pain that we may go through in that work situation or that relationship situation or that family situation, we're growing. If we look at it through the lens of growth, and we look at it through the lens of love. I will love regardless. Is sometimes we have to say, I will love regardless of this situation that happened to me. I will learn how to love in a greater measure by asking, by contemplating, by reflecting to my higher source to guide me, aid me, direct me in the situation that I find myself in. And God will help us to learn how to love when we ask for it. We don't even think about it. We don't even think about asking. Why not ask God to heal you of those situations? Why not ask God to say, okay, you know, this was painful for me. This was painful that this person ended up being duplicitous. They said this over here, but they did this over there. Or they cheated on me. Or they didn't like the project that I did, but they took pieces of it and then they made it their own. Yeah, and that was a sense of betrayal. But either we're gonna get caught up in that betrayal or we're gonna get caught up in that duplicity of what the person was, which gets us angry and frustrated and annoyed, which is further away from the cultivating the qualities of love. And we have to cultivate the quality of love in those situations that are hard edges to us and what we thought was going to happen versus what actually happened. So what does that mean to cultivate love? It means that you're willing, even in the situations that are not to your liking, find something you can appreciate. Find something that you can say, Lord, Help me to appreciate blah, blah about the situation. Or I can see how this person was maybe duplicitous, but what it taught me was this, and I appreciate that, what it taught me about myself, about what I made to look for or in other individuals. So that's one thing we need to. The cultivation of appreciation is so powerful to, on the road of being able to expand your heart because love is about expanding your heart and expanding your being to feel a greater 
measure of graciousness, a greater measure of gratitude, a greater measure of knowing that there's beauty in things that look really awkward or don't look so great, that you're willing to see what is the beauty in this situation. The next thing that we can do to cultivate love and expand that love, that we, some people do a lot of, other people don't do enough of, and that is saying thank you. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your willingness to go out of your way to help me a little bit, to move me forward a little bit with the work that I was doing. Or thank you that you you gave me, you know, flowers as opposed to expecting that that should automatically happen from your mate or the person who's special in your life. We can always say thank you and why you're thankful and why you're thankful. Because one of the things is another quality of love when you're trying to cultivate it is this uplifting quality. You want to lift, uplift people, not pull them down, but uplift them and see the beauty of who they are and see the beauty of that soul essence, that they're a twinkle of mirth that's coming from their eyes. And when they, when they said something that they chuckled around and you could appreciate that, that twinkle of mirth that happened um, and you say it. And you say, thank you for, you know, uplifting me. You came at the right time because I was feeling a little bit down. And thank you for having that joke or that side comment or whatever that brought a smile to my face. So it's these simple things, be appreciation or being saying thank you or uplifting, helping to uplift others, especially when we see people are down, especially when we know that things are stressful or there's hard, hard, some hardness or hard edges that are taking place and how people are expressing themselves to each other. How can you get in there and see something that is uplifting, that is of value, that will help that person in time of need? The other thing that we don't do enough of in order to cultivate this quality of love, because once we cultivate it and we have it more integrated into who we are, love is for letting go, letting go of all the other stuff that may get in our way and also letting go and giving that love to others. That does require some reflection on your heart. It's literally taking your attention and putting it on and around your heart. It's like you've taken your hand and you're feeling it in the warmth of your hand or you rub your hands a little bit and then you feel it and you put it around your heart and you want to anchor in the warmth of what it means to love. And you you bring up and reflect on situations in which you were so loving. You expressed that love and you gave that love. That's how we, through the memories that we do have, it helps to also strengthen the quality of love and our being able to give it more readily. That reflection time, it may be cut through poetry or maybe through music that you're thinking about the love and what that means and how do you want to express it today today and thinking about what is love of how I was yesterday how can I bring it up a notch higher today in my givingness in my gratitude in my appreciation in my thankfulness how can I pull it up a little bit more and feel it and smile and be gracious and be willing to reflect on love, meditate on love, read about love. That's the ways in which we help to cultivate love. Now, why is this all important to cultivate love? Because it impacts the soul. It impacts the soul. The more harmonious vibrations that happens, the soul is like that, going back to that bouquet of flowers or flowers and you know in a flower bed. It helps to allow those flowers to grow, allows our soul to grow, allows our soul to blossom, allows the soul to be able to have some buffer to some of the stresses and strains that are happening because you know you can be able to switch into the quality of love switch into what I could value about the situation, switch into another reframe of the situation that has happened to you. And most of all, ask your soul, what do we need to do here, guys, in this situation? Ask your creator, your God, your I am presence. How do we need to navigate this to make this 
a situation that I can either grow from or know that I need to step away from and do something else, do something different. So that when we can love and we're kind of bubbling up with love, we're accepting and appreciating who we are. It doesn't mean that we're not going to continue to grow and advance and that who we were last week can be different from who we are this week. That's okay, but we can accept where we're at and know we will continue to evolve. And that's what the soul wants. The soul wants to have a showering of love because it creates an environment of harmony. It creates an environment of harmony. And where there's harmony for the soul, it allows the soul to be able to have a greater connection to who you are because you're not connected to, to your soul. Your soul self is connected to God. So there's a whole kind of piece that we're not going to get into today about why we have these different phases within ourselves. The soul versus God uh, versus the um, human ego, which I call the ego persona. And what that all means in some of the episodes I've been talking and sharing about gives you some flavor for that. When I was talking about laying the foundation in the series in 2022, I was laying the foundation of understanding there's certain things that where you put your attention is where your experience will be. If you want to cultivate love, you want to put your attention to love and being loving and kind and some of the other qualities that I mentioned before and being thankful and uplifting, appreciative, showing gratitude to the things that are happening. So there, there's a whole network of why these all work together. And so what I'm just talking about today is love and letting, go, letting it go, letting it be unleashed to other individuals. We need more people in the world that are showing forth love and they're doing it from an understanding that it's a higher spiritual path to walk. It's a higher spiritual path to walk and to be on in the midst of some of the things that happen in the world. We can be able to say, what is the thing that I can garner from this situation? How can I send forth love into the situation? Even if you're seeing it when it's streaming some negative things that are happening, how can you say, Lord, you take command. Lord, you send the Lord love into the situation. Help people to appreciate what needs to be appreciated in this situation and not just see the negative of what's taking place. And how do we shield our children and shield our hearts from those things that are are taxed on that love. That's a conversation all in its own. Getting back to this last point about love is we want to every day in every way cultivate love, being love, giving love, showing love, honoring love, reading about love, be it in your Bible, be it inspirationally, or being it from what other people can send to you as quotes and things. It's like sometimes we have to have like a wall. And on that wall, we have all the qualities and attributes of love that we're working on and focused around for that particular month or that particular day or whatever it may be. But you're kind of trying to keep your attention focused there in order for you to be able to be more loving and expanding your heart, which expands your soul. Something to think about. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me for this episode on Mastering Life's Adventures, being your best self through soul evolution. If you have enjoyed what you've heard today, I would be delighted if you would share this episode with others. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my Mastering Life's Adventures podcast. Look forward to your joining the next episode. Please leave any comments or suggestions you might have below. Bye for now.